Mr. Bill Blair. Uh, Bill started playing baseball in the early 1940s, before Jackie Robinson broke in, before there was an, an, a thought or an opportunity that a black man may be able to play in the major leagues. Um, Bill started playing in that with many old black spiders in that when he was still in high school. And traveled all over the United States playing baseball with Detroit black senators. He played with my, my good friend up there, James Cool Papa Bell. So we can tell cool Papa Bell stories all night, one of the greatest baseball players of all time. One of my favorite stories about Cool was he was 48 years old, playing in the California Winter League, and uh, just had gone out there to play a little ball, as he was, he was telling me. And I was reading a newspaper article in that about one of the last games. He, would, he had hit a scratch of a hit, got on first base, scored from first base on an infield out. The man was fast. <laughs> It was 1958 until the Boston Red Sox had their first black ball player. It was a long, hard process. And for the, for the, for the ball players like Dennis coming up, to be told that you had a chance, to be told that you had an opportunity, and it really totally wasn't there. If you were an impact ball player like a Hank Aaron, a Willie Mays, an Ernie Banks and that, you were going to get a shot. But there were the, the black ball players that got a shot from the mid from 47 when Jackie broke into the early 60s with few and far between. We also have the opportunity of having Cagney Williams with us. And Cagney spent a lot of years playing baseball right here in Dallas. And they, uh, the, the, the Brown Bombers barnstormed in that uh, all over Texas and can really tell us in terms of what was black, what was baseball like here in Dallas during that period. And I might get him to touch, uh, I might get one or two of them to talk. Well, Mr. Blair had a team after he, after he quit publishing in that. You had the Red Devils, didn't you? I think the Red Devils and Bombers hooked up a time or two. <laughs> There's still some controversy there. But, but I said, you know, we're, we're very fortunate to have three outstanding uh, former Negro League baseball players in that here with us this evening. You know, I've had the pleasure and the opportunity of, of interviewing over 750 former Negro League ball players since. My wife and I started the Center for Negro League Baseball Research a number of years ago. And the one common thread that I have found with all of the ball players, these guys played baseball because
because they loved the game of baseball. It wasn't about big money contracts. And, you know, Bill played in Portland for the Rosebud and Detroit for the Black Senators with Black Barons in Birmingham, with the Indianapolis Clowns. Played it all with all the big Negro League teams. You know, Dennis barnstormed all over the country in that with, with, with Double Duty Radcliffe and the Chicago American Giants. Cagney played up and down the road from, from Austin to Waco to Shreveport. And I uh, can tell you what 60-40 ball and, 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 and playing local baseball was all about. But these gentlemen played like all of the other Negro League ball players. They played the game of baseball because they loved the game of baseball. The thing that has endeared me so much to the Negro Leagues and to the Negro League ball players myself has been the gentlemen themselves and their attitudes and who they are as individuals. As I said, I've had the opportunity of interviewing over 750 ball players, and I pretty much get the same story from everyone. They were they loved baseball, they were appreciative of the opportunities that they had. They didn't, re they didn't resent the young ball players today. They had the values that we really look for, and that's one of the reasons I was so excited to have the Negro League ball players here with the Big Brothers. The Negro League ball players had the values that we really want to pass on from one generation to the next. To uh, kind of further, uh, the gentleman that went back and asked a question about did black and white teams uh, play one another? And Mr. Blair was talking about, you know, at the end of the season, there would be, they, uh, Satchel Page would have his own uh, team. In fact, you saw uh, on the, um, the video in that a picture of Satchel Page's All-Star team's uniform that's in our museum collection. But at the end of the season, there would be All-Star teams of the Negro Leaguers, and they would barnstorm against All-Star teams of white ball players. We have documented several thousand games that were played during this period of time. And with historical records out of the newspaper, the Negro League ballplayers won about 68% of the games that they played. In fact, one of the, what kind of really made things extremely difficult is at the end of the season, you, you 